Well, I had every intention of coming out here this morning in my shop and just turning something and not doing a video. But I started making this little natural edge bowl and I thought, eh, good video. Let me take you over to the bandsaw and I'll show you how I prepared this, this blank. And I'm going to start another bowl. It's just identical to this and I'll show you where I cut it from a piece of crotch wood. Alright, now what I've got here is part of a crotch. Now, originally right in here is where that crotch came together. And this limb went in this direction and the other one went in that direction. But there was a big split here. This is actually the other half of that crotch section from the log. So I was a little bit nervous about making a really large natural edge bowl. So what I did was I cut um, I cut that bowl blank that I just showed you from right here. And I'm going to cut another one also. Here is the twist on this particular video. Um, I've got quite an angle here on this piece of wood. It's just not, uh, it's just not flattened off, if you will. And I will show you how I did that over on the lathe. But let me, let me uh, cut this on my bandsaw. And then we'll go from there. All right, now, one thing about this particular project, I didn't really enjoy cutting this uh, crotch down the middle like this, but it gives us an opportunity to see the grain inside here. Okay. I'm gonna just take a little bit of water and spray on that. And that is really, really some spectacular grain. If you're if you're ever looking for some nice figure and grain, just go to uh, an area that's a crotch in a tree where two branches kind of diverge like the fork in the road. So anyway, I've got um, one of my poster board round blanks here. Okay, eight inches. And I'm not going to get a very big bowl out of this. But I'm going to cut this on my bandsaw to this 8-inch uh, poster board. I've just got a, a scratch all driven into that with a hammer. I cut my, my bowl blank a little bit large. That doesn't hurt. And what I'm going to do, let me take this out of here. Now what I'm going to do when I put this on the lathe is I'm going to take this blank and turn it. It's really, really um, sort of, you know, out of balance, if you will. I need to cut this at an angle like this. I'll do that with a gouge on the lathe. And... I'm going to save as much of this grain as I can. Is it grain or figure? It's probably more figure than anything else, but... Before I go over to the lathe, I'm going to... I'm going to move this just a little bit. Make a mark here. Drill this out right here, and this will be for my... either my spur drive or my live center. Okay, and I'll put this between centers and I can, I can manipulate this and uh, try, to get, try to get the high points right here and the low points level. All right, well, I've got my first bowl done. Call it a prototype. So the next thing we need to do is find the lathe and put this between centers. Now, one interesting thing about this bowl blank it's covered in um, lichens, or I'm not sure what it is exactly. It's not mold. It's just something that grows on a tree when it's out in the forest. And uh, I'm suspecting this is hackberry. 
I'm guessing. This was given to me by uh, Bruce, who now lives down there in uh, Missouri. All right, now if I had a preference, I would chuck this up with a screw chuck. Um, ordinarily, <laughs> I do a better job cutting these on my, my chainsaw. There's no safe way, in my opinion, to cut this, okay? And I may not go all the way up to this line, but you can see I'm going from the bark here to the bark here, okay? And I probably won't go to that line. I'll start trimming this away here and see where I'm at. But what I'm aiming for is a level surface on this bark right here in this orientation. So I need to just put this onto my lathe. I've got a nice hefty spur drive on this end. And again, I've got that drilled out with a, a paddle bit or a spade bit. And if this comes loose, this will guarantee that it's not gonna fly off. It's gonna be sort of captured in that, in that drilled opening there. Okay, there we go. So what I'm going to do, and I may slowly work my way up to this line. I've got a lot of wood to take off there. That's okay. One thing I'm going to do, just to guarantee my spur drive is really embedded in that, that wood. lock my spindle and I'm going to just turn that back and forth and that'll really drive that in there. All right. Okay, what I'm using is a three quarter inch bowl gouge. Okay. And the way I'm presenting my tool is totally in a scraping position. I've got the flute just pointed straight up. That means when I put this on my tool rest, the force of the wood is going right down into the tool rest, and that really saves my hands, okay? One thing I'm going to do is I'm going to replace my, my live center. So I'm going to just simply put this uh, cup center back in there. And I took a wood chisel and I, I took most of that wood off. It was at a, a really bad angle. So uh, once again, I'm going to readjust just a little bit. I don't want to do this too much because I don't want to remove too much of this wood, kind of, kind of bound by that. However, just to kind of keep these high and low points level. <clears throat> Take that off so it doesn't fly and smack me. Here's another little bit of wood. Okay, now let me show you something on this little natural edge. This is actually uh, some holly. <laughs> and, um, I did this in another video and I actually went through the bottom of that. And when it dried, it cracked anyway. So if you look at, at the high points and the low points, ideally you would have those all level. Okay you would have this high point and this high point in the same level plane. And then you'd have 
this low point and this one in the same plane. Now, if you're a little bit off, I think it looks funny. Kind of like, uh, you just kind of missed it. But if you're a little bit farther off, it looks like you did that intentionally. And that's what I'm going to do in this particular project here. I'm not going to, you know, make that, I, you know, I'm not going to make that perfectly along with this line here. I would just be removing too much wood and I don't want to do that. Plus I want to save some of this wood right here with this this nice figure is. So I'm going to make sure I'm all locked down and I'll check that as we go along. I'm not going to hurt anything to really torque on that and I'm not turning all that fast. So much of this video is is about uh, positioning this bull blank in the right spot not so much about turning I'll put other videos up for natural edge bowls Now perhaps you can tell right in here, I'm starting to get uh, level and trued up. My tool rest is a little bit high, so uh, I need to find a scroll chuck that I'm going to use. And it looks to me like I've got a little bit more wood on this end than I do over here, which might be kind of cool. So we'll just kind of see as we go along there. So let me work on this a little bit and we'll start forming the tenon. Okay, now I've selected the uh, chuck and the jaws I'm going to use. These are uh, three inch chuck jaws. This is a Nova chuck. This is one of my old ones, but this is a really good size. It's a little bit uh, larger and a little bit uh, maybe beefier. So I've got that marked on my, my calipers and marked it with pencil. So I can take that down and form my tenon, and I'm gonna I'm gonna find a little bit smaller tool. I'm gonna retire my my monster here. You may be thinking I'm going in the wrong direction here from the top down, but I'm trying to keep the bark on and I'm not quite there to the top edge down here. I'm going to reverse my bowl and put it in my chuck jaws at this point and then I can, uh, you know, kind of approach the top of my bowl a little bit easier. So let's do that. All right, so I'm all ready to chuck my my bowl blank up into these three inch jaws. Now let me show you one thing you've got to be careful about. This center bit right here, it can be too big to fit inside that center of your chuck jaws, so I'm, I'm okay. Kind of measure that a little bit. Now, something you can do here. Now, I'm going to bring my my tail center up just to kind of give me another hand. Put a little bit of pressure on that. There we go. Now, make sure I'm locked in really, really well. Okay, that should do it. Now, I typically turn these in one go. I finish turn them. I'm not going to rough turn this and let it dry out. I'm sacrificing some of the, the 
level high points and low points on this just to save some wood. I could keep going and, and take more wood off the bottom, but I don't want to do that. Uh, this bowl's getting small enough as it is. So it's going to be a little bit out of balance, but uh, that's okay. It'll be a little bit uh, funky. Now, I didn't cut this tree down. I don't know when it was cut down, okay? But the bark is really, really hanging in there. And you're better off when you cut a tree down for bowls, if you can do it in, uh, oh, I don't know, late November, December, January, February, when it's uh, really cold. I'm going to take my tail center away and hollow out the, the inside of this. And I have determined that this is hackberry. I called uh, Bruce and uh, he did drop this off at my house last time he was in, in Billings. So I guess it came from Missouri. I'm sneaking up on the thickness of my wall right here. I need to start worrying about my depth here. So I'll find a, a depth gauge. But first I'm going to go establish this thickness right here, quarter inch or so, and I'm going to go down below the bark all the way around. Sneaking up on my final thickness here, I'm about uh, oh, almost an inch thick down there. I got a little ways to go. Uh, yeah. going to show you every bit of this. It's pretty much uh, more of the same. One thing I'm going to do at this point is take a negative rake scraper and clean this up. I got some nasty tool marks on there. So 
So I'm going to go back to the bottom and establish that thickness there. My, my wall thickness right here is, is pretty good. All right, I've been doing a little bit of work off camera. Let me show you where I'm at. I got everything pretty much uh, the right dimension down to this center bit here. It's probably four and a half inches in diameter. And I'm working my, my negative brake scraper. Okay, let me just do a little bit of that and I'll show you the shavings I'm getting off that. Still a little bit thick right there. So there it is a cut. I've got a nice burr on that and that's important. So I'm going to take my, my bottom feeder and go down to the center here and then I'm going to just check my, my depth. Okay, now what I'm doing is I'm taking my calipers and I'm, I'm putting them inside right here where these two chuck jaws come together. All right. Less than a quarter of an inch. Not what I wanted. What you can do I'm getting a little thin down there. I don't like that. Eh. I still need to, to uh, level off this surface with my scraper. What you can do is take that tenon and make it a foot detail, which I did on this bowl right here. Okay. Hopefully you can't really tell that that's a tenon, maybe if you're a wood turner, but you can use part of this for your thickness on the base. So I'm going to find my scraper and just clean that up and, and quit. I like to turn these relatively thin and they may warp, but my point is that you can't really tell if they warp or not. So I'm going to find my drive block, reverse this, and finish up the bottom of my bowl. I do not have a vacuum chuck. What I've got here, uh, one of my drive blocks with a worm screw there. I'm going to just put that in my chuck jaws. Okay, I've got my, my bowl blank chucked up between centers, basically, against the drive block. And let me show you what I need to do. This ridge right here, I need to blend that in from here to this surface. And I'm going to take my tenon down and make a, a foot detail out of it because Lately, I've gone through a couple natural edge pieces. Uh, and I'm going to do quite a bit of scraping on this with some of my scraping tools. I'm turning right at 800 RPM.
All right, now this is a tool I recently put together. This is a Robert Sorby one inch, 25 millimeter scraper. Made a handle for it. And I've got some tool marks and bumps and I'm gonna just kind of go, go over that with my, my scraper. And it's important to have a nice burr on that tool. Okay, you can probably hear my grinder. Put a, put a new burr on that and you can probably see the difference. Yeah, that's really, really doing a nice job on that surface. All right, now I'm gonna work my way up the side with my scraping tool. And you can see right here the difference between this surface and this surface. I got some torn grain up here that I'll need to deal with. This is pretty soft wood. And I will finish these bowls, put a little finish on them, and uh, show you the final result. So, yeah, out of balance, I don't know. I, I like it. I think it's okay. A little different with a little bit of uh, some of that crotch figure right here on the side. So, show you some pictures. Thank you for watching and uh, talk to you next time. Thanks.